Carol. All right. Hello. Welcome to Mari Mar's Spanish Table. Coming to you live. Uh, yours, yours truly, Mari Mar and Christina. I am so excited because also next week we're going to Spain. So for two weeks we will not have a cooking show on Fridays. Damn. But we are so excited today. We will be doing a classic tapas recipe mushroom stuffed with pork and almonds and sherry and well i think we need a little uh toast to to the weekend oh, our yes. friday friday glass of yes. wine oh, we'll the friday glass of wine mm -hmm. i always, always look forward to this we'll be friday. toasting with our 2016 mascarals cheers, cheers. Mm. and yeah so let's talk a little bit well let me have a sip first first things that's first. right so uh, we want to talk about tapas. Yeah. And what we're going to do today with the recipe is that it's a recipe that can be done as a first course or as a tapa. We will make it as a first course. And the difference is that I chose uh, mushrooms that are fairly large. I like the brown mushrooms. And uh, for a tapa, you would choose the smallest ones. So, but we will make it for... Um, and we are certainly mushroom lovers. Mm -hmm. We uh, mm -hmm. eat lots of mushrooms. Uh, mm -hmm. Not those other types of mushrooms, but the ones you find in the supermarket. Uh, <laughs> and all that. And, and, um, and, um, but let's talk a little bit about tapas. So tapa in Spanish means cover. Mm -hmm. So why, what are the origin, what's the origin of tapas and why the name? Aha, uh -huh. uh -huh. so tapa, um, tapa, the origin of the word tapa can be traced down to the middle of the 18th century in Andalusia, Andalusia, southern Spain, and that is horseman country. Horsemen, horse women, horse people. Cowboy. <laughs> cowboy? No, we don't have cowboys in Gaucho. Spain. Well, no, that's no. Argentina. <laughs> and anyway, no, 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 just horsemen. Um, ca uh, caballeros, a caballo, no? Caballeros, exactly. Anyway, uh, so so the, the horsemen would uh, arrive to the inn, um, tired and, and sweaty and so on and and hot and they would be welcomed by the normal lady of course of the inn with a glass of sherry because that's what sherry uh, where sherry is produced in andalusia and that's what people have as an aperitif mm -hmm. so uh to prevent the dust and the rain even from getting into the glass it would be um covered with a tapa which was a slice of bread or cheese or ham Huh. And that's where it came from. Or and maybe the, even from flies or bugs from falling in. Flies and bugs, you're right. Yeah, I forgot <laughs> those. So anyway, and the patron only paid for the wine. The tapa was free. <laughs> so that's how it was developed. <laughs> and, uh, and today, really, tapas is a way of life in Spain. And especially, um, maybe not, yeah, 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 actually all over Spain. Uh, but in Madrid, in northern Spain, there's, in, in San Sebastián, I mean, it's the... It's the, pinchos in pinchos. San Sebastián, well, right? Pinchos is when they have a, a, a thingamajig. I thought that they referred to tapas as pinchos. No, no, no pinchos is when you have a skewer. Mm. Uh, but uh, what was I? So yeah. they're really all over Spain. Tapas. Oh. I think it. I think Spanish culture and the way that tapas arose. It's just a way of life. It's very mm -hmm. much reflective of Spanish mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. right? And the, the reason, is, as you may know, we eat lunch and dinner very late in Spain, and uh, three o'clock. That's normal. Three p.m. Yeah. Uh, here, when I have a 3 p.m. lunch, I call it lunner. Guess, get it? Lun, lunch, ner, dinner, lunch, dinner. Ha, ha, ha. And uh, very, good. Very, so very smart. Funny. Very ha. smart. And, uh, and so, for, for um, uh, yeah, so before lunch, normally people would go to a restaurant and they would go first to a tapas bar. Tapas bar, not topless bar. And uh, they would have a uh, tapa here and then another bar. And sometimes you make a whole dinner out of tapas, jumping from tapa, uh, tapas bar to tapas bar. And I guess that's because Spaniards are very friendly. They really are. Uh, at least they used to be when I lived there. And, uh, and <laughs> They're less friendly since you're no longer living there. Is exactly. That what you're saying? Yeah, now the Californians are the friendly ones. <laughs> So, yeah, so, it really is that kind of like, oh, have a bite, have a drink, meet some friends. I feel like that's really emblematic mm -hmm. of Spanish mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, um, oh. and now tapas have become so popular throughout the world, mm -hmm. which was not the case like not 20 years ago. When I came to live here, yeah. uh, there were, as you know, you know, people were yeah. thinking of topless bars instead of tapas bars. <laughs> But um, yeah, the the culture is is very ingrained. So even before dinner, and also when you have uh, an, an appetizer at home, you 
don't call it a tapa. Tapa is in bars. <laughs> and uh, so you call it an aperitivo. It's more elegant, mm. right? And what usually um, would one drink with tapas, generally speaking? Well, a glass of sherry is the classic, of course. And, uh, and of course, the, the wine is... Um, I don't know, you're, you're really paying attention to the conversation with friends and you're standing up, so you don't pay that much attention to the wine. So you wouldn't have a super duper great wine. You would have maybe a, a, a fruity white or a, or a lovely rosé or even you know, a Pinot Noir, but not, not, a, not a very super complex wine. You would have it's, La Masia. It's, a, it's an easy going, easy yeah. drinking, yeah. Yeah. Uh, social thing yeah. rather than a focus on a big, Big yeah. wine. But well, today, today we thought that we would have it as a first course yeah. so that we can have two Pinot Noirs. Yes, right? yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And also do let us know that you've tuned in. We love to um, we love to know who has joined us and to, to give a shout out. We know that our beloved Samuel I Way and Coralie, they're Samuel. watching. Um, so good to have you, as always. Um, Tim in Copenhagen and Denmark. <gasps> no oh boy, it is, it is a late night, but it's Friday, so hey. And wow, the three. bars are probably open, so maybe three. maybe you went out. And this is this is a good little last <laughs> night. Rong Shang, our oh, beloved, Rong another Rong. beloved Club Mari Mar member. Yes, yes. And uh, Diane Lowe and Bill Stanley. Oh, Diane. Uh, it Hi. sounds like this is maybe the first time ever that they're not cooking along with us. They're our faithful cooking along oh. with us. But hopefully you've got a nice glass of wine and we, uh, we toast to you. Okay. Shall I sit, talk about the wine? Okay. Or... Um... Yeah, let me let me start talking about the recipe. Okay. Talk about the right. So essentially, what we got? Whatever mom says, it's always always that's the right thing. And uh, never. And anyway, so the here are the ingredients, and you have essentially the mushrooms, which have been you've taken the the what you might call it the the stems out, mm -hmm. and uh, and here are the stems, which are. Um, uh, um, picados, 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 brown. And they're not, and you don't wipe the the mushrooms. You don't clean them by like running them underwater. You pat, no, you get a wet no. paper towel and you kind of yeah, pat them, yeah, right? Exactly, exactly. And why is that? I know because that that's how we do it, the, but the flavors out. You lose the flavors. All right. Yeah, yeah. So pat, wet down a paper towel and pat the mushrooms. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do this recipe in stages. This is essentially half the recipe. So here are some ground almonds which you've toasted in a three fifty oven for about 10-15 minutes, and then you ground them, and uh, and then we have here some white bread crumbs. Oops. And essentially that's just bread. You know, a day at least day old, or I usually keep it in the fridge freezer and and then we have some um, orange zest that also will add a very intriguing flavor to the recipe and then some pepper and salt so then what we do while you talk about the wine you put it all in a bowl and that's what I will do with very clean hands we've been watching Julia Child's uh, programs because I always loved her programs and Christina really was not familiar with them no and, well I mean I knew they existed yeah, but I but never watched I not watch them and so, you know how she it's, uh, it's, uh, prepares everything with her hands? I said, yeah, that's the way to do it. <laughs> so here we go. Everything goes in here, and I'll mix it up with my hands, which is the proper way to do it, and, yeah. uh, and then we'll go from there. So, okay, so a few words about our 2016 Mascavaz Pinot Noir. Here we go. You can get a little bit of a glimpse of the label. So this is our classic Sonoma Coast Pinot Noir from the second of our two vineyards. And this is the Doña Margarita vineyard named after my grandmother. And Abuelita. Yes, 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 Abuelita. And this is, ooh, those smells already, I'm getting them. Mm. This is a wine, um, it is a bit darker in style than our Russian River Valley fruit, our La Masia Pinot. And it is called Mascavals, which means horse ranch in Catalan. Mm -hmm. And that's because this is where we, until very recently, had a horse barn. And I grew up riding there and competing in um, the very demanding sport of dressage. Mm -hmm. uh, a beautiful, beautiful sport. So anyways, this is a really a near and dear to, to my heart, um, this beautiful property in Freestone in the Sonoma Coast. Mm -hmm. And 
It is a bit cooler than our than this property, the Don Miguel Vineyard in the Russian River. But now it is still a barn, Christina. It just is not with horses, and it's now an event venue. Yes. And if you are thinking of getting married or a daughter married or whatever, <laughs> uh, hey, <laughs> think of us. It's a beautiful or beautiful a place. maybe once there's a vaccine, like a vaccine celebration, yeah, <laughs> where we all get together. Whichever kind of a celebration. <laughs> Okay, so now so we're first, oh. so it is. Um, it does spend eleven months in oak. That is fifty percent new oak, all French oak. We only use French oak, and um, yeah, it's really that darker style, a bit more earthy mushroom, hey, mushroomy forest floor, but mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. still nice fruit like wild cherries mm -hmm. and some uh, and earthy. And very yeah, nice. clove very nice. yeah. maybe from the oak. Mm. So it's really it's a wine that is um, oh yum. I'm I'm getting excited even just from the aromas of what what we're preparing uh -huh. thus far. Uh -huh. Okay, so. so so now the preparation is you stuff you use this stuffing um, into the the mushroom. So I'm gonna pretend that I'm doing it, which you know I did one or two. But here's what they should like. I have three that are. You see how it kind of it's it's. Um, with a really pour. press press in yes it's pressed in and um and it covers the mushroom right can you really can you see, see it yes Oops, the other okay. side the yep. other side all right there we go there we go okay. Oh. Okay. and do ask questions as we go um whether it's about the wines or the recipe or substitutions if you don't have well this doesn't require even a food or actually it does require a food processor oh, but yes. um yes. if you have questions about Substitutions. Let us let us know. And you know, you don't really require food processors because I have to remind you, Christina, that when I was a kid, there were no food processors. Mm. We had the and mortar you managed. and pestle, and you went bang, bang, and bang, you bang, and you could hear. Of course, not me because I was not allowed to be in the kitchen because you know, ladies do not get into the kitchen for the cooks. So I would um, get all those beautiful smells out of here, bam, 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 bam. So anyway. And so. also shout out to uh, David Clardy, a good friend of Samuel Y, and also club members. So good to have you with us. Who are coming to visit us as soon as as, as soon as it's feasible, feasible. Yeah, a little yeah, more feasible. Yeah. So now what I'm doing is I am going to saute the mushrooms stuffing side down. And I'm getting a little oil here, warm. And then I have these lovely three ones, which I am going to uh, sauté. And, and so this recipe, so it is very classic uh, traditional Catalan because a lot of tapas include mushrooms. And yes. um, as we That's as right. we've said, we love, love mushrooms. Um, we've been enjoying a lot the at the market, there are these um, mycopia mushrooms oh, that right. are right. a whole assortment of beautiful, almost wild mushrooms that are, are really, really lovely, a whole, whole collection. Yeah. And, um, and then the sherry, adding the sherry, what does that do? Oh, you see, in tapas bars, you find a lot of um, uh, mushrooms used as a tapa. And you would not very often have them at mushrooms with sherry. Mm -hmm. And essentially it would be with a sauce, depending on the bar or the restaurant, and you would have um, uh, you know, sherry sauce, uh, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But it's called mushrooms in sherry. Okay. M mushrooms all sherry, yeah. right? Um, and what else? And uh, the old It adds sorry. a bit more to the traditional yeah. stuffed mushrooms. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, so now I'll show you what these guys look like. They look like this. Let's see. So this is after they've been figuratively. Uh, well, I did. I did it earlier. So that's how they look when they are. You see, kind of. You press the the um, stuffing down on the pan, on the on the skillet, and so they become a little flat hmm. and um, and really brown, nice and brown, nice and toasty. And okay. so this because you're then going to put them in the oven and bake them. Mm -hmm. Why is it that you saute them first and then also bake them? Yeah, just so that you get the, the uh, stuffing, the stuffing part up, uh, gold and, and nice and yummy, right? So I'm going to now put them in a, um, oh, I forgot, what, uh, 400? Oops. Let's see, uh, uh, 400, 400 degree. 400 degree oven, okay? They're going to go in the oven, okay? 
So the sauteing first and then the baking gets the, it cooks them, but it also gets the top nice and, and golden on, on the stuffing. And mushroom and mushrooms, pork and almonds, these are really classic um, ideal pairings for, for Pinot Noir. Um, so this recipe certainly lends itself beautifully to, um, to a, a Pinot Noir pairing. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, shall we try our second yes. Pinot? And yes. you have the links to the recipe and the wines we're tasting in the content of the post so you can um, cook this recipe at home and, uh, and get the wines. Mm -hmm. So our second Pinot. Oh, you know what I meant to say that I forgot? So also, when you go to a restaurant in Spain, whether it's in Barcelona or Madrid or anywhere, uh, normally, especially on a good restaurant, you will have, uh, they will offer you a tapita. That means a little tapa. And that would be either, you know, some almonds and um, sausage, you know, chachichon, which is so good. Uh, we serve it here at the winery. Mm. Uh, or uh, some, um, um, you know, fries, I mean, chips, or some, um, you know, almonds, I mean, little things, right? Or it could be in more sophisticated restaurants, you might get a, a little piece of bread and, and, and toasted bread with tomato, the bread and tomato that, that, prepared, that we've prepared here before. And it would be with some escalivada, if you remember what that is, <laughs> and some grilled vegetables on top, or an anchovy. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, it can be more sophisticated if-, if A I little amuse bouche, as some others might call. Yeah, but I prefer that. <laughs> Tapa. Tapita. <laughs> Tapita. So oh, this is the, I think it's this one. This is mine, yeah, okay. The 2015 Stony Block Pinot Noir. Oh, that's a lovely Yes, one. and this is the first time we're tasting this on it our is. show. Yes. It is. Okay. So this is usually a Club Marimar Mar exclusive, mm -hmm. um, but you now yeah. all have access to it temporarily. This is a specific block on this vineyard, the Russian River Vineyard the stony block because guess what it is very stony there are mm -hmm. lots of stones mm -hmm. mom came up with that one <laughs> we already well, established that she's really clever well not really much clever but when we were uh, preparing that was the just land, a hint of sarcasm i know i know, I know that uh, we like sarcasm um we actually envy sarcasm but anyway so when we, the 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 uh, uh, land, the parcel, is, is a property that I acquired in 1995. And, uh, and it's not very big, um, the, the plantable area is not very big, and, but it's very steep. It's really the steepest part of our Dom Miguel vineyard. And um, so when they were preparing the land for planting the vineyard, there were so many stones that we broke many tractor blades. So logically, it had to be extra there. expensive. La, la, la parcela pedregosa in Spanish, we call it. <laughs> and so, yeah, and this is a unique block. It has a different soil profile Slider. than the rest of the yeah, vineyard. It's true. Yeah, yeah, it's the Sebastopol series, series mm -hmm. as opposed to the Goldridge soils that we have in the rest of the property. And this is really, um, yeah, it's really, uh, I'm getting really beautiful aged um, yeah. aged notes. The difference in one year here, I'm yes. really noticing. Yes. This yes. has evolved beautifully. Yeah. So and I'm was, really getting that kind of, um, again, mushroomy, that um, kind yes. of like what you yes. look for in an aged burgundy, if I might say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. still, burgundy, burgundy wishes, of course, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but still nice fruit with that, um, a bit of, yeah. Violets and, mm, absolutely, and absolutely, yes, mm, yes, it's beautiful. And what I find with the the, the ones that we make from this block is that um, they are perhaps the most um, earthy and uh, 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 mushroomy and, and so on of the whole Don Miguel Vineyard. Savory, Mar. also very savory. quite savory. Exactly, that's a great word. Um, yeah, yeah. Where it's not, it's still there's still some fruit, but it's it's a more savory savory mm -hmm. style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Shall we try uh, yes. the all mushrooms? Right. We're gonna pretend like it's been uh, fifteen to twenty minutes mm -hmm. and uh, whip them out out of the yeah. oven. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. John Ortiz asks. Do you eat at La Vinoteca Torres in Barcelona? And yes, we certainly do. Um, it is a fantastic space, right? On It's a restaurant and wine bar, really beautiful, um, really high-end on the beautiful Paseo de Gracia in Barcelona. 
um, which is kind of like the Fifth Avenue of Barcelona. Mm -hmm. It's really stunning. It's a great, yes. great, great um, escaparate. How do you say? Um, show, windows. Show. Wait, well, window. way to. It's good brand. Good brand <laughs> position, and yeah. the food there is stunning. Oh, let me show what they look like. Oops, okay, fine. here are here's the you show finished. You, you, okay, you get burned. You have some of them. <laughs> the finished mushrooms. There we go. Oh, they look so nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's try one. Okay. 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 So, when I so yes, we yeah. love the Vino Teca Torres, and uh, and yeah, mom hosts. Um, like yeah. events there and I, I've celebrated a few birthdays there before a night out on the but town. now what we have if you go back to Barcelona and you come to our winery then at the end of the VIP super duper tour the best in Spain and I mean that is um, we have a little restaurant that well not a little restaurant a, a restaurant with a little name it's called Al Salleret and that means in Catalan the small Mm, so yeah, so yeah, uh, cellar. Cellar, exactly. So, and it's really a, a lovely restaurant, and it's right there by the vineyards, and it's it's as good as La Vinoteca. What do you think of oh, this? Oh, so 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 yummy. The nutty, the almonds, and the mushrooms. As as you may know, mushrooms really have that um, umami, that sixth flavor characteristic mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is so mm -hmm. satisfying. Um, maybe that's why we love them so mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. Like soy sauce and red meat also has um, umami. umami. Mm -hmm. You can actually, I remember in studying for my WSET uh, diploma, the, which is a um, uh, fascinating, it's a great program. I remember learning and doing this test at home. If you like have a taste of a raw mushroom, which isn't that great, but then you microwave it for 30 seconds and then taste it, then you get, you can maybe identify what umami is. If Interesting, I've never heard that, I've never heard that. And let's see how it goes with, with the wine. This is the Johnny Blow, right? Mm, well, I'm not sure. Okay, okay. I'm not, I'm I have my wine sorted, but I don't know about you. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, I mean that, Pork, mushroom, almonds with Pinot. Mm -hmm. Bonnie yeah. is sniffing around. She would really like to taste mm -hmm. some. And if we turn our backs a moment, she mm -hmm. will taste some. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. is quite the stealthy, stealthy. Mm -hmm. You want to say hi, Bonnie? Mm -hmm. We're going we're gonna to have Bonnie say hi. Bonnie says hello. Mm -hmm. The you know, dogs finally got a grooming oh, yeah, after like over three months. Can we see her bow? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know that she appreciates this. Uh, she doesn't <laughs> look too happy. Let me tell you, next month, okay, July, Chico too. in less than a month. Uh, wait, are you listening? Uh, yes, I'm listening, but Chico, Chico got jealous, so okay, Chico fine. says hello too. <laughs> okay. So Chico's going to be a year and three months in about a week, but Bonnie is going to be 11. Wow. In about a month. Yeah. Wow, wow, in wow. Less than a month. Well, I think that we are just about at time to wrap up. Mm -hmm. I hope that you have enjoyed um, learning a bit about this recipe, about our wines. And um, the links to the wines and the recipe are in the content of the post. And so we have a big announcement. Um, we are, some of you may have already heard us talk about a paella episode coming up. We are going to take a two week break while we are in Spain for some family things. Um, and we will come back in three weeks on July 17th um, with a special paella episode. And it's gonna be a bit more interactive. We're gonna do it on Zoom so that you can really ask questions and um, actually make you know paella yeah, with yeah, us yeah, if yeah, you yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you'll be getting emails about that. If you do be sure, to send us a message if you're not on our mailing list um, with your email so that we can add you and you can get all the details on how mm -hmm. to sign up. And let me tell you that I've been begging Christina to do a paella. Christina, please, let's do a paella. No, I'm just too complicated. No, I think it's no, a little okay. tricky to do in like 20, 25 minutes. And now guess what? She wants me to reduce the ingredients because yeah. actually it's a recipe from my, from my um, second cookbook and I've kind of added more ingredients. Like for instance, I've added mushrooms and eggplants and zucchini and whatever, right? And, uh, but you know, you, 
I think that I, we're working on that one, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, and Lucy White has tuned in. My roommate when I was living in uh, Hemel Hempstead. Hello, oh, Lucy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When yeah. I was in the UK. Oh, so good to have mm -hmm. you tune in. So, anyways. Join us for Paella episode on July 17th. It'll be on Zoom. Sign up for the emails. Give us your email address. And then after that, we're going to be doing the show back on Facebook Live the first Friday of every month. So after that, it'll be August 7th, the next one. And oh, Patty has tuned in and says she misses Hi. Bonnie and of Marimar course, of and um, and Christina. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we we love you, Patty. Uh, we love all of you guys. Thank you and uh, cheers. Yeah, cheers. have a wonderful weekend Thanks and see you in three weeks for paella. Yes, mm -mm. can't wait. Yum yum. Cheers. cheers.